Hi, mamas. It's Carol Webb. I'm the founder of Just Breathe Mama Coach, and I'm a coach for stay-at-home moms of young children, and I help them to navigate the overwhelm to create a life that's more manageable. And I really thought this uh, next interview with our guest today would be a lot of fun and maybe even encourage you to let out that singer that might be hiding within. This is Julia of Grace Music Studio, New York. Julia teaches private voice, piano, and acting at her studio in Brooklyn, in Brooklyn, New York, sorry. And she's currently working on a reality TV project about her business. She has performed in many operas, musical, and Shakespeare plays. She sang at Carnegie Hall every year from 2008 to 2011 with Remarkable Theatre Brigade's Opera Shorts program, plus she has many other achievements. Julia loves helping new moms de-stress with breathing exercises and learn to sing with their babies. She has had a lot of success with helping women connect with their children and grandchildren through music. Some of her favorite sessions have included helping a young mom write an original lullaby for her newborn and helping a new grandmother learn to sing songs that she could belt out with her grandson on road trips. I love that. Welcome, Julia. It's great to have Hi. you here. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you're here. So I'm curious to know where you're from and how you became a voice coach, a piano coach and an acting coach. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, right? It's a yeah. Lot um so I, well now my business is completely online so mm -hmm. i teach i can teach people you know from anywhere which is really cool mm -hmm. so it's now even more diverse um because i do all my lessons like this on zoom or facetime um but i started out in upstate new york which is um very rural where i grew up was very rural mm -hmm. um and even in high school, um, my friends would be like, Julia, will you help me? Will you help me with my acting? Or will you help me with my singing? And I was always like, yeah, of course I will. Like, it's the show. We have to do the show, you know? So I was always in shows. Mm -hmm. um, and so I went to school for musical theater. And um, I, I wasn't really a fan of musical theater per se. What I loved was opera and classical music. Mm -hmm. um, but musical theater allowed me to study acting and singing mm. uh, to the highest level. Um, I also, unfortunately, for everybody in my class, had to study dance. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am not, <laughs> you know, like when you go to musical theater auditions, they say, you know, hey, we're going to sing you. And now we're going to have you read sides. And now we're going to dance you. And so you needed that skill. Mm -hmm. Right. I needed it. But. That's definitely not my, that's not my strong suit. Let me say it like that. <laughs> Although I love to dance. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did a lot of performing. I did a lot of national tours out of college. So I, I went to college. I got a degree in musical theater. Then I went to grad school, got a degree in classical music and classical theater in London. And then after that, I did a whole bunch of touring, mostly Shakespeare and cheesy musical theater, like really cheesy, like, you know, like tap dancing and like yeah, yeah. jazz hands. Yeah. Oh, I love that though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I, so then I, when I was, how old was I? So like in 1999, because I've been teaching now for 22 years, Mm -hmm. Um, I decided that I just didn't want to be on the road touring anymore. I was like, ah, oh. I mean, I loved doing shows, but mm -hmm. touring, it's a hard life, you know? So I decided, let me open up my, I did. And I also didn't want to temp. I would do temp jobs in between my acting gigs and between my shows. And I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me just, I saved some money because I don't believe in starving artists. I'm not. <laughs> you can be an artist and not starving. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I um, saved some money and then I started, I had a part-time job while I started my teaching business. And I thought, let me give it a year and let's see, let's see if people are interested in taking singing lessons. And that's what I really wanted to teach was singing lessons. Mm -hmm. I wound up teaching acting lessons because other, you know, people in operas with me would be like, Hey, 
can you coach me on this in my aria i'm like yeah okay so and business people would say hey i have to do this business presentation and i have to get this client or i'm going to get fired okay mm -hmm. we'll come and let's work up your presentation like i'm i'm good at that so i just sort of used my skills my acting and my singing skills to help whoever needed help mm -hmm. oh, and i i started teaching piano yeah because moms were like um can you teach my because i teach kids mm -hmm. can you teach my kid how to read music i'm like i can but they need to they need to play an instrument in order to read music and they're like okay well can you just teach them some piano and i'm like i guess so so i've i wound up teaching piano and writing a I wrote a music theory book for um, little, little kids because I couldn't find one that would go at the pace of like four-year-olds. Had a lot of four and five-year-olds that were like, they couldn't quite read yet. Mm -hmm. So I made up, I kept making worksheets to do with their mom. And so finally I was like, this is silly. Just put it in a book and have everybody buy the book for like 15 bucks. We'll put it on Amazon. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and perfect. It, yeah, so it's called Music Theory Grade One, and it's it's on my website. Um, it's really to be used with a teacher. It's not because there's no answers. There's no answer key in the in the book itself. Um, but any music teacher would be like, "Oh, I get what this person is teaching. Like, I get you know, I get how to help them." Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it really was about from the very beginning. It was about helping people. Mm. So specifically, uh. as I started to teach singing, I heard all these stories from people about, well, you know, when I was eight or nine years old, my teacher was like, everybody else sing, but you, you mouth the words. And I'm like, oh, Aww. that's terrible. Yeah. All kids deserve to sing. Right. Mm. And so I started to become an advocate for people who thought they couldn't or were told they couldn't sing or even themselves doubted themselves like, oh, I can't sing. I'm not, you know, I don't have a great voice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's just, that's just not true. Anybody mm -hmm. can learn. So um, over the year, it was a theory when I started 22 years ago, it was a theory. I hadn't proved it. 22 years in, I can say definitively, anyone can learn to sing. Even if I, you know, they come into the studio and I'm like, okay, sing this. And they go, oh, and they can't even find the pitch mm -hmm. even that person can learn to sing well really i would i wouldn't have guessed that i thought you always had to have like a yeah. slight natural talent to start with and then you work with that but anybody nope. can oh that's nope. amazing anybody that's can very yeah. encouraging it's here. there's only yeah there i mm. mean like there's only one thing if if there's a problem with the voice box itself right. where somebody can't inflect for example, they can speak only on one pitch, like if they were just talking just on one pitch and they couldn't inflect, Yeah. then that I wouldn't be able to help to teach them pitch. Let me say this. I haven't had a client like that, but literally everyone else that can speak and like go up here, go down there, whatever. If they can inflect their voice, they can sing. Oh, amazing. Uh, well, that's, that's lovely that yeah. you encourage people. Really fun yeah to do that as well so you said you even teach four and five year olds what what's the age range of people that you can provide lessons for is there like a a limit like should you not do it once you hit 40 or <laughs> i don't know that's so that's so funny such a good question too so my oldest student is 90. oh wow um that's great yeah. there's literally no age cap at all there's mm. any literally so the lesson that I would give to a four year old is going to be different to mm. a lesson that I would give a 90 year old or a 40 year old. But the truth is, a lesson that I would give to anybody is going to be different than a lesson I would give to someone else, because people are very unique. Yeah. And where they're at in terms of their physiology, how their voice feels to them, how they feel mentally and emotionally about their voice. Mm -hmm. So the woman who wrote a lullaby for her baby did not consider herself a singer at all. And she was just like, I just really want to, I really want to sing something to, you know, sort of rock my baby to sleep. And we went through a whole bunch of everybody else's songs, like this song and that song. And 
she just kept saying, mm, my baby just really likes it when I just hum anything. Like it's not even necessarily a melody. I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's write something that has a melody that you can remember. So you don't feel like I'm humming the baby to sleep, not on pitch. Mm -hmm. That's where it started. Um, and so she, we wound up writing a song because when we hear other people's songs, we want to imitate. And what the baby wants is you, your voice, mm -hmm. your vibration, not an imitation. And they can tell if yeah. you're like, if you're holding the baby and you're talking in a regular way, they know your vibration, right? And if you start to, like pretending like, oh no, like this, they're like, what is that? What are you what doing is that? Why are you doing <laughs> yeah. that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why are you doing that? Yeah. Yeah, they know their mama's voice for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. It's a it's a very particular uh, frequency and it's soothing to them. Mm -hmm. So we wrote a song that had um, not a big wide range, had like four or five notes. So around a uh, speaking range that somebody would, you know, sing in and we wrote a beautiful lulling melody and she just felt really like that was her baby song yeah Aww. and I was like isn't that cool when that baby grows up they're gonna be like mom you wrote that for me that's yeah that's I mean so that's special. like amazing yeah yeah super special that you could be a part of that too I love that yeah so, I know with your voice lessons are there different styles of music that you teach because I know that you said you did a lot of opera and um, theater is there specific styles yes. you teach then or do you teach like a wide range I teach everything most people really? almost at this time of my of all of my students I have one one uh, woman she's in her late 20s who just started to get interested in classical music we just started to work on some Debussy, but literally everybody else is like, no, 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 no. I want to sing Adele. I want to sing Alicia Keys. I want to sing, you know, country music, pop music, R&B, jazz. Oh, I really like Frank Sinatra, whatever it is. It's very eclectic. Mm -hmm. So I can teach somebody how to sing on happy birthday. It doesn't matter at all what the right. song is. But right. we, we pick stuff that they like. Okay. So yeah. they practice. It, you're going to enjoy it. Get better. Of course. Yeah. 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 That makes a lot of sense. So can you tell me about the voice lessons you offer? If somebody purchases a, a, a voice lesson or a package of lessons, how, what, what do they do? Do they have to fill in like a questionnaire and then how do you go through your sessions? <laughs> um, that, so I, they don't fill in a questionnaire because singing is so personal mm -hmm. that if somebody um, contacts me, we have, I talk, I like to talk with them on the phone. Right. I like to talk with them on the phone and ask them what, what it is they're wanting exactly. Right. So we have, sometimes my new student phone calls can take up to an hour. It just depends. People mm -hmm. want to talk about, you know, what it is they're looking for. And, um, and then the structure of the lesson is always half, uh, technique, like, um, exercises and half repertoire or songs. And so the goal is how do we take this technique that we're learning and apply it to this song? But the song, it doesn't matter what the song is. Mm -hmm. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yes, it totally does. Thank you. Um, so what other programs or lessons do you offer online? Um, so uh, I do a free sing-along every Saturday at 3.30 but yes, that's I free that. and I on, on Instagram, yeah. right? Yep. On Instagram and on Facebook, I simulcast. Oh, okay. So you'll see me going back and forth from this camera to my phone and then back and forth like this. Cause I'm talking to Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Um, and I am not a technology person. So <laughs> at, like, if you told me a year ago that I'd be doing that, I'd be like, you're out of your mind. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how to work Facebook live. Um, <laughs> But now it's you're... like necessity, right? Necessity yeah. is the mother of everything. Right? Yeah. Now you're an expert. You just do it because what else is there to do? Right? <laughs> I definitely wouldn't call myself an expert, but um, oh, that's yeah, great. so that, I do that. That's a free, that's something free. And um, 
every Christmas, um, since my oldest student is 90, she is, I consider myself a spiritual person, mm -hmm. uh, which is why my business is called Grace Music Studio, because by the grace of, you know, whatever, the divine, I have a job kind of thing. Um, but I'm not into, oh, my religion or this religion. I'm not into dogma. Mm -hmm. I'll say it like that, right? Yeah. So, but my 90 year old student is very, very Christian. That's her path. That's her, what she digs, you know yeah. what I mean? And when um, I had the idea uh, years ago, I was meditating. And when I was done meditating, I was like, oh, I should really Christmas carol. Like, why not? I have all these mm -hmm. people who are learning to sing and how can we give back to the community? And so um, I called my 90 year old student. I was like, hey, do you know any other? Cause she was pretty, she was like 70, Eight at the time she was pretty mm -hmm. vital maybe even 78 seven yeah. um I was like do you know any other people like you're pretty vital so we don't need to come to your house but maybe people that can't get out of their house to go to a service or something maybe mm -hmm. we could carol for them go to people's houses and Christmas carol for an afternoon and it turned into this big project which we have done every year I think this is our 13th year this year oh. um and because of COVID, we had to do it this year on Zoom. Right. But um, that also was not my idea. That was her idea. I was like, well, we can't do it because of COVID. And she's like, well, can't we do something on Zoom? The 90-year-old is saying to me, can't we do something on Zoom? I love I'm like, <laughs> right? I'm like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. And that's just so heartwarming. I mean, who doesn't love Christmas carols? It doesn't matter right. what religion or if you're spiritual exactly. or not. Yeah. It's just, it's beautiful to sing along to and to listen to. Totally. Oh, so that went, yeah, that's yeah. the other thing that I do. Um, and that's also for free. It really is like, not just students. It's like, Hey, my friend from college, my friend from, Hey, want to come Christmas carol? You know, like that. Because yeah like everybody can sing, everybody can give back. Yeah. Right. So true. Um, is there a top question that you get asked by your clients? Uh, the very, there are two top questions. The first one is, I don't have a good voice. I'll never have a good voice. Maybe you can teach me to a certain degree, but I'll never really sound great. Right. My answer is no, not mm -hmm. right. Learning to sing on pitch in the center of the pitch with a supported sound, all of that is technical stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you hear somebody singing, you're like, ooh, I like that. What you like has a whole list of things, skills that you can learn. So that's the main thing people always ask me, like, can I learn even though I don't have a great voice? And yeah. Can I learn to sing well? Am I going to sound good? And my answer is yes, you can. Right. Uh, does it take time? Yes, it takes mm -hmm. time. Just like anything else, right? Yeah. It's not like, yeah. Yeah, it's um, so true. You put your mind to anything and you can actually do anything. I didn't know that singing was one of them though. <laughs> I, to yeah. be honest with you, I yep. didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, what, that's what the show, what my show is about. Mm -hmm. Uh. I'm interested in <clears throat> enlightening people about the fact that only talented people can sing is a lie, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I'm interested in people just knowing the truth. That's all. Yeah. It's not like, oh, it's not this big crusade. Yeah. It's just like, you know, if somebody was like, you know, if the whole, um, creation was under the idea you know that that this is blue I'd be like well actually it's it's green guys this is green <laughs> it's, it's you know yeah. what I mean that's yeah. all it's yeah. just like I happen to know stuff that most people don't know and so I want to I want to share it because I want people to feel like they can be part of music they're not shut out they're included mm -hmm. they yeah, get to be really part lovely. of it yeah. Yeah. Cause instead of standing on the sidelines, just like watching you, you can. Yeah. In. yeah. I like that. Because we're all required as especially mamas. Mm -hmm. Mamas are required to sing all the time. Like mama sing me a bedtime story. I have to do my one-year-old's birthday party. Who's going to start the singing? You know what I mean? Huh. Like, I mean, I don't, 
I wish I had children. I have nieces and nephews. I, mm-hmm. I never got to have kids, but I adore children. And yeah. I've, you know, been around a lot of mamas mm-hmm. and more than guys, mamas are expected to sing, yeah. especially when their kids are little. And so to feel like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to do, or at least I can sound good enough, mm-hmm. good enough that I'm not going to feel like ashamed of myself or whatever. Like, like the student that wanted to sing with her grandson in the car. Mm -hmm. She's like, I turned the radio on and he sings, but I don't. I'm like, okay, well let's fix that. Yeah. You don't want to feel, you don't want to feel that way. Yeah. I mean, your grandson doesn't care how you sound either, but exactly. He doesn't know it wasn't for, it wasn't for him. It was for her. Yeah. So, so we, I was like, okay, what are you guys listening to in the car? And so we practiced it. And she's like, Hey, I'm starting to sound pretty good. I'm like, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, rock on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it is. It's, it's for you, even though you're maybe thinking about other people thinking, Oh, what do they think of me? What do they think of me? But it's really actually for you. Yes. And that's an important thing. Oh, so what are the biggest benefits that moms would receive from taking your classes? Is, is it that confidence? Um, that's a big benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, the, so, so many far reaching things. Um, this is from feedback from students over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically moms say that they are especially new moms. So if you get a chance to take a shower, which apparently that's a, that's a real thing. Like, yeah, it is. like oh my God, <laughs> yeah, I can get, I can take a shower <laughs> and you have enough energy to sing, which sometimes you don't, but like you turn on the radio or whatever, like it's me time. Yeah. It's like, I can have fun singing and doing me time and not have my husband in the other room or whoever in the other room, like, Hey, mm-hmm. be quiet. <laughs> you suck. Stop singing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah great so, time. Mm-hmm. I never thought of that. Just like belting it out in the shower while you're there. And you know what? It also changes that energy too. It probably would lift you right up once you start singing. A hundred percent. There, there's all this research. So that's another benefit. So confidence, me time, uh, actual endorphins are released. Feel yeah. good chemicals are released in the brain oxytocin is produced when you sing mm-hmm. also when you dance mm-hmm. you're singing and dancing you know like washing your hair or whatever That's even better yeah. <laughs> right Double exactly dose. yeah <laughs> yep fantastic oh that's great can you today offer a little tip or technique um, for those busy mamas who want to try it out at home while Absolutely. they're with their little kids yeah yeah so um um so a fourth, a fourth benefit is the breathing exercises that we work on in singing, they help chill the nervous system out. So mm-hmm. most moms, when they first, they're totally overwhelmed. They're yeah. just completely like frazzled. It's hard to, it's hard to do anything, of course, right? Now you're, mm-hmm. now you've got this life that's now not in you cooking, but is outside. And now you got to keep it alive outside. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like what do I it's do? It's so intense. Yeah, yeah it is. It's a lot. It is. Definitely. Right. So um, any breathing exercises that moms can do to help chill them out will be beneficial, not just to them, but to the baby, because the baby can, can feel mm-hmm. when the mama is stressed out. They Definitely. can feel that. Mm-hmm. So um, yes. So I'm going to actually get up and we're going to do a little breathing exercise. Okay, great. Yeah. So um, go ahead and hop up with me. Okay. Uh, so we can show all your viewers that anybody can do this. Okay. And you're going to just, um, if you have a small baby, you can do this lying on the bed or the couch with the baby on you, like okay. literally on your belly, on you. There's nothing that we're going to do that's going to disturb even a sleeping baby. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that we want to breathe not into the chest, but into the belly. Okay. So any moms that have studied, uh, that have done like Lamaze Mm -hmm. for, uh, for birthing, they might be like, oh yeah, it's kind of like Lamaze. Um, but so you want to place one hand, if you're standing up and you're not with your baby, place one hand on your back and one hand on your belly. And as you, and if you're lying down, you're going to just place both hands on the baby. If it's 
oh, on, right. on you. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so you want to feel as you breathe in, you want to feel like your belly can relax and breathe into the space of the belly opening. So the first thing is we want to get the diaphragm and the solar plexus to release enough for the belly to be able to expand. So as we breathe in, we're going to breathe in and out. Good job. We're going to do that again. Breathing in. Yeah, you got it. And out. You already got it. You're a natural. You go, girl. <laughs> I like doing breath work. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So now we're going to our, our back hand, the hand that's behind you, mm -hmm. if you're lying on a couch, lying on the bed with a baby on you, this is where you're going to concentrate now on trying to breathe into your back. Okay. So it's not just your front that's expanding, but your back and also your sides. So if you were going to go from the side, it would feel like that. The ribs go out. Mm -hmm. Yes. But the hardest place to feel the breath is in the back. So yeah. for right now, in order to feel it in the back, we're gonna bend over, right? Obviously okay. you can't bend over if you have a baby on you, mm -hmm. but if you're standing, you can bend over and you're gonna try to breathe in and see if you can feel this hand, this back hand expanding. So go ahead and breathe in and out. And you can feel it like filling up like a balloon, breathing in and out. Come on yeah. up slowly so you don't get dizzy. Yeah, you felt it. Yeah, I did. Definitely. That was really good. Thank you. <laughs> You're so welcome. Yeah, so, um, good. We have a lot. I do a lot of breathing techniques. Um, that's just one of them. And that's an easy one that somebody, you know, somebody yeah. can do. Oh, I like that. The, the, yeah, I do belly breathing as well sometimes. So that um, it feels really nice. And it's nice when you use your hands because you can you can really breathe into them and the sides. Yes. And the back. I like that using the that's hands right. as yes. a guide. Oh, that was nice. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, that was so wonderful talking to you, Julia. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I wanted to let all the mamas that are watching know that um, you can follow her on Instagram at Grace Music Studio New York and New York is NY and on TikTok at Grace Music Studio New York. And you can also find uh, Julia's classical CD green and her instructional DVD on how to sing called singing easy as one, two, three, and it's available for purchase on her website, as well as all the other information about her voice lessons at gracemusicstudionewyork.com. And it, again, New York is NY, but I'll put all the links uh, below for you. And mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to thank you once again. It was a great interview. Thank you so much for joining. Thank us. you. I'm so excited that I got to talk to you and you're in Canada. So yes, Brooklyn to Canada, <laughs> Canada to Brooklyn. We're just I love it. Stone's throw. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.